Hi, this is Kavita Suresh Kumar and in this video I am going to demonstrate how to create S3 bucket in AWS and storage bucket in GCP using crossplane composition. So I have logged into my GCP console. So first let's review whether we have any storage bucket already exist in this account. Cloud storage buckets. We don't have any storage bucket. Now I have logged into my AWS console. So there also let's check whether do we have any buckets. The menu, click buckets. So we don't have any bucket in this account as well. So we are going to use crossplane to create S3 bucket in AWS and storage bucket in GCP. So for that, first we need to install crossplane in a Kubernetes cluster. So I am going to use the local minikube as a Kubernetes cluster and I'm going to install crossplane in it. So for that first, let's verify that Minikube is up and running. So Minikube is up and running. So we need both kubectl as well as Helm. So let's check that. So we have the kubectl client version 1.27.2. Let's check for Helm. So we have Helm version 3.11.2 as well. So now we are going to add the Helm repo first. Helm repo add cross plane stable. Then we need to give the repo URL which is charts dot cross plane dot io slash table so the cross plane stable has been successfully added now let's do a help repo update to update the local cache the local cache also has been updated successfully now let's do a helm install helm install cross plane cross plane stable slash cross plane now we need to provide the namespace cross plane system and this namespace is not created yet so we'll give create namespace name space so the cross plane has been successfully deployed now let us check the pods that gets deployed as part of the helm installation kubectl get pods we have installed cross plane in the crossplane hyphen system namespace so we need to look for the pods in that namespace kubectl get pods fun system so we could see the two pods crossplane pods are successfully running crossplane installation also creates some api resources as part of the installation so let's review that api resources and then let's grab for cross plane so these are the resources that gets created as part of the helm installation we are going to create the s3 bucket in aws for that first we need to create the AWS provider. So I have the necessary YAML files already created. So let us let's review it. So we are going to create the AWS provider. So let's check the content of the AWS provider YAML file. So we need to give the API version which is going to be package.crossplane.io slash v1 and the kind is provider and we are going to give the provider a name as provider hyphen AWS. Then the package, we are going to give 
ஃபிக்ஸ் பேக்கேஜ் டாட் அப்பவுண்ட் டாட் ஐஓ ஸ்லாஷ் அப்பவுண்ட் ஸ்லாஷ் ப்ரொவைடர் டாட் ஏடபிள்யூஎஸ் அண்ட் த வேர்ஷன் இஸ் ஜீரோ டாட் டுவெண்ட்டி செவன் டாட் ஜீரோ நவ் லெட்ஸ் கிரியேட் இட் கியூப் சிடிஎல் ப்ளை மைனஸ் எஃப் டபிள்யூஎஸ் நவ் த ஏடபிள்யூஎஸ் ப்ரொவைடர் ஹாஸ் பீன் சக்ஸஸ்ஃபுல்லி கிரியேட்டட் லெட்ஸ் ரிவ்யூ தேட் கெட் providers so it has been successfully installed but the health is unknown it's going to take few minutes so in the meantime let's create the gcp provider also because we need that provider for creating the storage bucket in gcp gcp so it is almost similar to what we have seen for the aws only thing is now we are giving a package different package provider gcp version is 0.28.0 so now let's create the gcp provider as well the gcp provider also has been successfully created let's review that so now the provider aws health is also true it's ready for use but the provider gcp still healthy is health is unknown so it is going to take few minutes so in the meantime let us go and create the both the secrets aws secret as well as the gcp secret so i have my aws credentials in aws credential.txt similarly i have my gcp credentials in the gcp credentials.json so first let's create the aws secret kubectl create secret generic then we'll give the aws secret and then we need to give the namespace to the cross plane system and then we are going to create from the file so we need to give from file and the key scripts to aws credentials so aws secret has been successfully created similarly let's create the gcp secret also create secret generic gcp secret then the namespace then again we need to provide the file gcp credentials.j so the gcp secret also has been successfully created now let's check the provider again get providers so still gcp is coming up so in the meantime let's create the provider config for the aws so provider config is primarily for associating the provider with the secret what we have created okay so let's review the aws provider config so the api version is aws.upbound.io slash v1 beta 1 kind is provider config so the name i have given as default one and then the credentials source is secret secret ref and the namespace is cross plane system name is aws secret key is crits so let's create this kubectl apply minus f pc so the aws provider config has been successfully created now let us review the provider status again so the gcp provider has been successfully installed and it is healthy also so now let us create the gcp provider config so in case of gcp provider config we need to give the project id all other information are same so let's create it g 
GCP. So the GCP provider config also has been successfully created. So now we need to create a composition. The composition is actually a template. So which is actually will be used when we are creating the composite resource. And here the important thing is we need to specify the composite type ref, right? So the composite type ref is going to be the, the composite resource definitions what we are going to create later. So here we are going to, here we have specified the composite type ref as the API version is custom hyphen api.example.org and the version is v1 alpha 1 and the kind is storage. So we are going to create a composite resource definition file with the kind as storage. This composition template will be used to create an S3 bucket in AWS and the storage bucket in GCP. So now let's create the composition. So we have successfully created the composition. So now we need to create a composite resource definition. Composite resource definition is generally called as XRD. So I have given the file name as that. So here you can see. So here the metadata name is storages that the plural form you need to give. And then this is going to be the group. So you can see here there's a group. And the names kind is storage, plural is storages. And the schema, so we have defined that uh, the location has to be specified. The location field is required and then it has to be any one of these pattern that is the EU, EU or US. And in case if we are planning to create any claims, then we need to use this name storage bucket and the storage buckets. So the difference between creation of the composite resource and the claims is composite resources when created, it will be cluster scope and the claims when it's created, it will be in the namespace scope. So now let's create this kubectl create minus f storage xrd dot yaml. So now we have successfully created the composite resource definition also. So now we are ready to create the composite resource. So this is the definition for the composite resource. So you can see the API version is the one what we have defined in the composite resource definition and the kind is storage. So we are going to give the name as bucket composite and the location is US. Because this is a mandatory parameter, we need to specify this. Now let's create the composite resource. kubectl apply minus F storage. So the composite resource has been successfully created. Let's validate that kubectl get storage. We could see that the composite resource bucket composite has been successfully created, but it's not ready. It is synced. It's not ready. Let us go and review that in the UI. Let's refresh this. So we could see that the bucket composite S3 bucket has been successfully created in the AWS account. Let's check in the GCP. So we could see that bucket composite storage bucket has been successfully created in the GCP account also. So one of the advantage of the uh, cross plane is it identifies the drift and then it reconciles. So what we are going to do is we are going to delete this bucket from the GCP console and let us see whether crossplane is identifying the drift and recreating the resource. So we have successfully deleted the storage bucket in GCP. 
let's do the same thing in AWS also click this then click delete so we need to provide the bucket name place the bucket name click delete bucket so the bucket has been successfully deleted the cross plane doesn't get any notification from the uh, about the deletion of the resource from the hyperscalers it regularly polls on a regular interval to see the status of the external resource it has created and if there is any drift it fixes the drift so it is going to take some time because the polling interval is 10 minutes so let's come and see what happens after 10 minutes now let us do a kubectl describe and check kubectl describe storage and it just got created 12 minutes before now let us get the bucket and describe the bucket kubectl get bucket so this is the bucket so let's describe the bucket kubectl describe bucket this is the name of the bucket so it's, it, it's clearly saying it's created the external resource let us go and review that in the ui menu buckets we could see the deleted bucket has been recreated again so let's go and review that here as well click refresh yes we could see that cross plane has recreated the deleted bucket so in this demo we have seen how to create a s3 bucket in aws and the storage bucket in gcp using cross plane composition and also we have validated the cross plane feature of drift identification and reconciliation if you like this video please do like share and subscribe thanks for watching the demo